What's up everybody? So I'm back. So tonight we're gonna go over what I've been doing since the last video. We're also gonna do the second intercooler pipe because I got the, the hose. And we're gonna start the dashboard and mount all the gauges and the cluster that I'm using. So we ended up getting the silicone coupler 90 for here. But what I did, I also modified the intake manifold to fit a VW throttle body that has a TPS on it. Um, I know you can just get a adapter for a TPS, but I want to run a good sensor on it. This is a Bosch sensor. I know I'm not gonna have any problems with it. So I just did that, it's pretty easy to do. So next, in a driver's compartment, I've mounted the steering wheel. I've also mounted in its temporary spot the hydro brakes and I've I've modified the factory e-brake so I can use that for now until I get this done. So the handbrake still works. But I also made it so I can pin it out. So if I want to drift with it until I get the hydro brakes done, I can. And then that's the steering wheel mount. So onto the back of the car. I did all the tail lights and reverse lights. So I got DOT lights, so they have reflectors in them. And I ended up doing a third brake light. And then this is my reverse light. So as you can see, I've been going crazy with this thing. I've been pretty busy. Now let's get to what we're doing tonight. So we're gonna start with the intercooler pipes and uh, get that done quick and then move on to the dashboard. So we're gonna start with this. It's not gonna be anything crazy. Just gonna go up and then into here. But again, I wanna keep everything tight in here because in the winter I am gonna put uh, snow tires on it so they are gonna be bigger. I'm trying to keep everything in tight here. So I have uh, large bends and uh, tighter radius bends. So we'll see what we need to use. It's gonna be a tight out of the first one and then we'll see what we need to get up. So I got the lower piece all cut and prepped. I have the upper piece all cut and prepped. Now I'm going to slide this one out as far as I can go, put this in the third piece, mark the angle and I'm gonna cut it long and then gradually creep up to it so I get the correct cut out of this. So I have it marked. I'm gonna cut it and see where I'm at. So I got it cut. Now I just gotta slide this pipe in and see where we ended up, mark it, and then weld it up. Hopefully it's a one shot deal. So after a little finessing, first try, lines up good so I'm just gonna clean this pipe up mark it and then tack it all together so I'm getting ready to weld this have it all taped together so it can't go anywhere I'm just gonna tack it but I will say one thing that people forget when they sharpen their tungsten is to clean the tungsten itself so you get better contact and a better weld all takes two seconds And that's it. So 
So I got this all welded. It was a little bit of pain because this is my normal welding bench, but I don't have to drag my welder in the back area again. So. I think it came out pretty good for cheap aluminum pipe. I mean, this is probably the cheapest aluminum pipe you can get. So I've had stuff where it has a coating on it or welds like shit, but this is actually welding pretty decent. So I'm pretty surprised. I was, wait I was waiting for a fight with this one, but let's go see how it fits. Here we go. On one side. I think it fits awesome. It didn't take much time. It's tight over here. Let me turn the wheel. So yeah, there's gonna be plenty of room. I mean, sorry, you can't see the tire, but. All right, so now that that's done, on to the next one. Intercooler pipes are all set up front. Um, really the only thing I have to make left is coolant lines, and I have to machine uh, coolant next because I'm going dash 16 out with no thermostat just because this thing's gonna be going full tilt all the time. I'm not worried about uh, heat in the cab because even if I put heat in there, it's not gonna stay. So let's see what it looks like done and then we'll move on to the dash. So for my gauges, I got a 10 inch screen. I just got it off Amazon. I think it was like 50 bucks. I got a three year warranty that I bought for like $6 with it. This is gonna be my gauge cluster. Uh, let me see if it's on. So that's what I'm using. I'm using Shadow Dash with the Lambo style gauges. So that will be my gauges for the car. So my thing was how to hold this so people don't fuck with it. I'm sorry, mess around with it. So what I ended up doing is I machined a couple pieces today to hold this. So this is the upper piece. And I even left a little notch for the front facing camera. So with this, I think I'm gonna put this in the center console just because I had to make a notch for the charging port on this. And I mean, I left as much room as I could to get a bend out of it. And I just don't want this in my field of view for it sticking up too high past the steering wheel. So I think this is gonna be the top part of the dash or the center console and then I'll put my switch gauges underneath it. So with this, this will be the dashboard. This will run Bluetooth off of, I'm using a micro squirt on this thing because I'm not trying to make crazy power. I'm just trying to get it to run. So that'll be good enough for this. I'm gonna Bluetooth send the gauge cluster to this from the micro squirt. So that will cover my gauges as far as what's going on with the engine. Um, this is my switch panel for my lights and everything else that's going on with the car. They have circuit breakers here. I'm also doing a, like a painless wiring harness for this just because the Miata harness was so much shit going on and I 
cut a lot of shit out of it, so I just figured it would be easier just to do a painless one. I'm also doing a uh, keyless push to start on this thing. So as you walk up, you'll have a key fob. There'll be no key because there's no key on that, that column. Uh, you walk up. As you walk up, if you have the fob, it'll automatically it'll chirp. And then you can get in the car. As long as the fob is within 10 feet, you'll be able to start the car. So <clears throat> the reason why I'm doing this on this car is because I want to use this on my son's BMW, but I want to make sure it works well before I put it on there just because I don't want him calling me in the middle of the night that his car won't start. All right, so this is what I came up for the center console. It's gonna come down. The switch panel will be right there. There's three gauges plus the push to start and then the tablet. So I got the switch panel mounted, the lower bracket for the tablet. I have enough room for all my gauges underneath it. So let's put the tablet in. All right, so I mounted everything. Um, the only thing I didn't mount is the gauges because I have to go get a hole saw for my other garage and I'll do that tomorrow. So let's take a look at what we got so far. So the first thing we gotta do is we have to draw the side panels. So I got the drawing done. Now it's time to load it on the plasma table, cut it out real quick. I'm gonna check one side before I cut the other one and then tack it on. And pretty much that's gonna be it for the night. So I got called into work. So I have to go to work, but I want to finish up this video and I'll put, try to put another one this weekend of finishing the whole dash. But this is what the side is gonna look like. There's still gonna be a top rain cover over it. Uh, but tell me what you think. What's up? So it's day three. Unfortunately, I got stuck on a 38 hour shift at work. So I'm back. I'm gonna finish up the center console tonight. Um, I got one side done. So I'm gonna do the other side, cut the holes out, and then this will be done. And then I'll finish the dash on another episode. But I wanna get this finished tonight. So let's get rocking. So it's over the CNC machine to the plasma table. All right, so we got this all cut out. Now we're gonna put on the brake, uh, bend it to the center console, and then tack weld it all together, cut out all the holes, and bolt this thing together. Let's go weld it up. All right, so we got both sides done. One, two. So now it's time to drill some holes for the gauges and then for the power cable and then bolt this thing together and see what it looks like. All right, so I get all the holes drilled on this thing and all put together. 
So now let's take a look at what we got. So this thing fits awesome. Let's take a look. I have to say I'm pretty happy with it. So let me just show you what we got real quick. These are gonna be all the switches for all the different lights. Um, we got a fuel gauge. We got an AM air fuel gauge. We got a Sun Pro boost gauge that I just had laying around. So I wasn't gonna put anything there, but I figured it looked better with three gauges. And then we got a push to start ignition. So I put the keyless ignition on this because I wanted to see how it works because I'm gonna put it on my son's car. Um, I wanted to be able to open the door locks as soon as you walk up without a key, automatically be able to turn on. With this thing, it kind of half the features don't matter because the car has no doors, but I just wanted to see how the keyless ignition worked in the real world with me driving. So again, let's take a final look at everything I've done on this video. And if you like what I'm doing, like, comment, and subscribe. And leave a comment of what you think, what color you think this thing should be. The definite, the inside is going to be black. Um, but let me know what you think the cage should be. Thank you guys. Thanks for watching if you made it this far.